Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we have a quick ramble for you. Uh, this is about smoke units, and particularly about BLI and MTH smoke units. So, um, yeah, this is basically talking about when smoke units shouldn't be placed inside engines, which were not designed for smoke units. Um, and now there's there's a whole, you know, opinionated piece about smoke units. A lot of people hate it, some people like it, some people love it. Um, and I'm not going to get into the, you know, how good smoke looks and how important of a feature it is. <clears throat> That is just basically beating a dead horse at this point. Um, people have already made up their opinions, and I don't really get into that. But my main issue right now is, as someone who doesn't really use smoke units that much, I have an issue with BLI in particular putting smoke units into engines that were not designed to have smoke units be placed inside them. And now this is what I mean. So up here up front, if you guys don't recognize what this is, this is actually a BLI Paragon 2 smoke unit. This was taken out of an H10 uh, from a friend. <clears throat> And uh, yeah, it's not a huge piece. As you can see, it's actually rather small and compact. You can see the little driver fan. You can see the heating elements right here. This is the little chamber to hold the smoke and it comes out right here. Um, there's a whole bunch of wiring coming out, but that's not a big, that's not the big issue. The problem is that this doesn't look that big, but if you put it next to like an engine, you'll see that this takes up a pretty solid amount of the engine's internals. It probably takes about this much space and there's no weight as a result in that area. And this is just to show that these are not small little pieces. This is actually a rather big piece that really influences the internals of an engine. And so there's two main issues with putting smoke units inside these such engines. Um, there are engines that are designed to have smoke units in mind, you know, like some engines BLI designed with the intention of putting smoke units inside when they designed it. For example, like Paragon, uh, many new Paragon 2 and Paragon 3 engines, uh, specifically engines which the tooling was created after they invented smoke units. <clears throat> So this is things like the, uh, things like the, uh, for example, the H10, the Pennsylvania Road H10, or the Santa Fe uh, 282, the 4000 class. Not the USRA, but the 4000 class of Mikados. Um, these are all engines that were designed with the smoke units in mind, and that's the reason why they're balanced. But what my issue is more when they put them into engines that had that they didn't have, uh, you know, inten the intention of putting smoke units when they first designed it. For example the PCM I1SAs. These were made in the you know, the PCM, which stands for Precision Craft Models, which is an offshoot brand from BLI. Um, and, you know, they, they were not designed to have smoke units in mind. In fact, these, these, this was designed before BLI invent, invented their own smoke unit. And so originally these engines, uh, you could tell they were not designed with smoke units in mind because they were all plastic. There was no die cast, no metal part. Everything here is all plastic. And so um, that can create for obviously issues because this is a heating element and plastic. This is made of ABS, which is, uh, you know, thermo set plastic, which will basically melt if it heated up. That's how they're, uh, you know, molded in the first place is they simply heat up the plastic and put it in injection molding to mold the piece. So as a result, if you put it in heat, it will melt. Um, and so the problem with that is that, you know, these are not designed to handle heat in mind. And so as a result, you'll see a lot of people where the smoke unit will start to melt the plastic itself, the plastic, you know, ch uh, funnel, chimney, smokestack, whatever you want to call it, even the smoke box here. <clears throat> will start melting. And in fact, I can show you many examples here. I have, this is a picture of my own um, actual BLI um, uh, J1E. You can see that the sides here are starting to bulge out. Um, you can see, so I bought this thing used and the original owner clearly used it, the smoke unit a lot because it's not supposed to look like this. Um, I obviously turned my smoke units off as soon as I buy engines. So this engine here is more or less pristine. This one has clearly been abused by the original owner with the smoke unit. Here's some other examples. This is taken from the BLI um, uh, fan base, I guess, from Facebook. You can see that this engine has a huge little dent here that's starting to sag in from the T1, um, which was also made in the PCM days, the early Paragon days of BLI. Um, here is a, a class A, I believe, the uh, or Y, Y6, I'm not really sure, I'm not too familiar with these engines, but this was also made in the, you know, pre, uh, prior to Paragon 2 era engines, and you can see the huge sag here, this looks really bad actually. And so yeah, like this includes many engines, including also the uh, the BLI T1, uh, which actually is almost entirely diecast. Everything the, below the running board and the cab is actually diecast in that engine. But the boiler, for some reason, was actually plastic, and so and that that includes the part here. And so you'll actually see images of you know uh, Pennsylvania T1s. Sorry, I should clarify Pennsylvania T1s and also Reading T1s uh, with plastic with their plastic boilers melting. So as I said, this encompasses many engines. In fact, that's actually one reason why the USRA uh, Mikados and Pacifics don't have smoke units. Um, um, just that's just that's just one reason why it's because it's all plastic. Uh, but anyways, you'll see that BLI has transitioned a lot more to making diecast boilers um, on their newer models, and that's that's actually very much the reason why it's because well for one reason it's so it doesn't melt uh, under the smoke unit heat, uh, but also for the second reason, and that is because when you put a smoke unit inside here, 
And these are these engines because again they're made of plastic they're very light they're designed to hold a very thick heavy uh, lead weight inside the front of the boiler here in fact i can show a picture of here this is a paragon t uh, sorry k4 you can see this huge chunky lead weight that takes up much of this thing and fun fact this engine is actually um entirely die cast this the shells die cast the frame is die cast even the tender shells die cast there's a k4 right here that's actually this photo, a photo of this guy right here um but the die cast shell which resists heat and also has a lead weight inside. So these engines are extremely heavy. <clears throat> and so when you have an engine that again has a plastic shell, which relies heavily on that big weight in front to you know hold to 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 give the engine traction, and you remove that weight be, uh, and, and put a smoke unit inside, but you don't change the shell to turn you know into a die cast. You keep the plastic tooling because they don't want to rebuild these engines. You know they already have they already invested in tooling to make these I one SAs. So they're gonna make them in Paragon two, Paragon three, Paragon four, even though uh, they were originally made in Paragon. Um, and so, but they, they add the smoke units and stuff. So as a result, the shells are not designed for the heat. The shells are too light and they're designed to, you know, heavily rely on that lead weight for weight, for traction. Um, and as a result, when you remove that, you have, you result in a really light engine. And in fact, I can I actually weigh these engines around here. And for reference, this is a Paragon 2, I wanna say. This has the smoke unit inside, which I turned off. And this engine here has the original lead weight. Again, this was designed with a lead weight in mind, and that's the, that's why they have these. This engine weighs, I actually, I did the weight test. Um, none of these have traction tires, but this one weighs 15 ounces. Let me double check. Um, yeah, this one weighs 15 ounces. Uh, keep in mind, a pound is roughly 16 ounces. I, I do apologize, I don't know the grams, a conversion to that. Um, if someone wants to put that in the description down below, I'd really appreciate it, but I don't have the time to do that right now. Um, but anyways, this weighs 15 ounces, so it's almost a pound. This one here only weighs 12 ounces. Now that might not sound like a huge difference, it's only three ounces, but keep in mind, a standard, um, you know, 40-foot uh, freight car, in, in the NMRA standard should weigh about 3.7 ounces. So it's about the weight of a freight car. Now this is not very heavy, of course, but if you're, you're combining basically these two together or these two together to create this engine. And so as a result, this engine actually feels quite a bit heavier and this can pull a little bit more than this engine here. Actually quite a bit more. Um, and that is actually another reason why BLI has heavily relied on these engines to rely on traction tires. Uh, they remove the smoke, they, they remove the lead weight, they keep the plastic shell, they put in the smoke unit, which is basically no weight, and they force you to use traction tires as a result for the engines to pull anything. Because otherwise, this engine can only pull like 15 cars. It doesn't, it can barely pull anything. These INSAs historically were, you know, able to pull about 100, uh, you know, 100 freight cars. Um, they often double head them to have, you know, 100, 150 freight cars, loaded coal cars, very heavy stuff. These are very powerful engines in real life, but mine can only pull about 10, 15 cars, which in my opinion is pathetic. Um, and so that, that's that's the second reason why, is, is because that these are way too light. Even these uh, K4s, which again, these were die cast. Uh, they, they, they actually were also made before the smoke unit eras, uh, days of BLI. But these, you know, these, these uh, the original ones had a die cast shell with a lead weight inside, and the later ones, uh, the Paragon 2 and onward ones, uh, removed the lead weight in lieu for a smoke unit. And this is the heaviest engine I currently own, like right now. This thing is insanely heavy as a result. Uh, the lead weight plus the die cast, you know, uh, construction in, uh, combined for just the engine only, not the tender. Uh, the, and the engine itself weighs one pound four ounces. That is an extremely heavy engine. For reference here, this one here with the lead weight removed, but still die cast. So this thing still pulls okay. Uh, this thing is only one pound. Um, again, one pound is 16 ounces. So this would be roughly uh, 20 ounces this is a 16 ounces. Uh, this is 15 ounces and this is only 12 ounces. So this is by far the lightest engine. Now for reference, I don't know if you guys know, but um, I think a, a relatively common engine that everyone owns that I think people can agree on is the Bachmann K4. This thing is an all plastic engine. It's kind of infamous for being a really kind of pool puller uh, because it's so light and just plasticky. Um, and yet this thing weighs actually 14 ounces. So you got to keep in mind. So this die cast engine doesn't quite, it compensates a little bit more for the lack of weight, but it's still without the weight, it's rather light. This and this is about the same weight. This. Um, and, and the plastic, you know, BLI uh, I1SA with the lead weight, it's about the same weight. And this is the lightest one uh, with a plastic shell, no weight inside, basically. I mean, of course, the motor and the smoke unit has a little bit of weight, but it doesn't really count as much. So to summarize, BLI's choice of upgrading their Paragon engines into Paragon 2 with the smoke units uh, without modifying anything, including the plastic shell, 
except removing the weight, is actually quite detrimental to the engine. And for someone who doesn't really use the smoke units, it's a rather big sacrifice if you think about it. I mean, not only is it is there a potential for your engines to start melting, the, you know, in the smoke box, or if you buy used like me, have you know accidentally buy an engine with that such damage, but also you're sacrificing the weight, and also you're paying more for the engine because obviously this doesn't make the manufacturing the engine cheaper. So BLI is definitely charging you more for that. Um, and also, you know, it's just it's just a, a pointless you know just endeavor to put this thing in, and so that's the reason why. It also makes wiring complicated, um, and so that's the reason why, honestly, at the end of the day, for someone like for someone who doesn't use smoke units, these smoke units are actually quite annoying to work with. And so personally, I'll actually be keeping my older Paragon or PCM slash Paragon engines uh, instead of these Paragon two engines because not only does it do they run better and they're cheaper and also they pull more, but also that uh, you know if I get one of these engines, I'll have to one day remove the smoke units and then put my own weight in, which is just a pain. You know, it's a hassle to do, and you know, it's ultimately not worth it for me. But anyways. Yeah, I think I think for future engines that BLI make, I hope you know it's it's fine because they have diecast and diecast engines will pull fine enough, uh, with, even without with even without the additional lead weight. As much as I love how heavy this engine weighs, I'm perfectly fine with this engine here. It's diecast. It's got a smoke unit which I won't be using, but at least it's heavy enough. So I'm not really worried about those. But it's really these these poor plastic engines that sacrifice so much in terms of weight for this additional smoke unit. Uh, but anyways, that's just my two cents. Um, I feel like it, ideally. BLI would try to retool these engines with uh, die casting or at least a, a metal or brass, you know, smoke box or slash uh, smokestack to prevent such damage and also maybe find a way to increase weight somehow. Uh, that would be ideally the solution, but they're never going to do that. Uh, knowing BLI, they love reusing old tooling. I mean, again, they've made this I want to say in Paragon, Paragon 2, Paragon 3, Paragon 4, and probably Paragon 5 whenever that's released. So they will, they will never change. Um, but anyways, it's just food for thought. Um, for reference, uh, BLI's competitor, MTH, uh, they've famously made... Ever, ever since the really beginning, all their HO steam engines with smoke units all are diecast. The boilers are all completely, completely diecast, and that's because they've thought ahead. Uh, they know that the smoke units will make the engines lighter and also will damage it if you use plastic, and so that's why they use all diecast. And their engines are not cheap, um, but they feel like quality, and they're honestly pretty solid running engines, and the smoke units are also pretty cool. But uh, BLI just has some things to learn and definitely some improvements to come, uh, to, you know, to go. Um, but anyways, that's just my two thoughts. Um, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. If you have any questions, please, you know, question that too. I'll be sure to try my best to answer all the questions for you guys. And yeah, that's just another BLI ramble, I guess, for you. Um, but anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.